Hey there, it's Sarah Myers, and I wanted to give you a little background on my story. We have a couple of new followers here, and you may not know, but for a long, long time, I was an undiagnosed bipolar one, walking around with unaware what was going on with my body, and I wanted to share what my journey looked like. So in my 20s, um, I was a very, very happy woman, and I dealt with ongoing issues um, ranging from just highs and lows, and I really just didn't know what was going on with my life. So in this um, journey, I um, experienced a lot of confusion, and I didn't know what to do with myself. And in 2012, I went to um, a military academy, and I was trying to graduate, and I was dealing with undiagnosed bipolar, and I didn't actually graduate uh, with a commission from this military academy. Um, I was let go, I graduated and completed all the schooling, and was released into civilian world, and basically um, from age 22 until age 28, I dealt with, hey guys, I dealt with undiagnosed bipolar. and. Unfortunately, like we didn't know that this was in my family. And if you know anything about bipolar, that runs, there's someone in the lineage that someone has bipolar. And unfortunately, could hear. Um, this is a this is a huge problem that no one knows about because with bipolars, if you're undiagnosed and you're postpartum, um, there is a huge chance that you can have a postpartum psychosis. So here I am from age 22 all the way to age 28, undiagnosed, I have a baby, and for three months I dealt with a severe, severe climb up into a manic state um, with a newborn, and I was very, very active coming out of a depression. And if you know anyone who has dealt with bipolar, if you know anyone, go ahead and let me know um, how that has felt because being on the other end of dealing <laughs> and handling and managing and supporting someone um, who is bipolar is a huge, a huge task. And sometimes you feel like you're not equipped and you're not enough. And I absolutely guarantee you, if you are, and thank you, I am well, if you are dealing and handling and helping someone who is bipolar, you are a huge, huge, huge impact on their life. And they may not know it. They may not know it now. But in the long term, in the long haul, if you stick around with a bipolar person, um, you may save their life. So when I was 28, um, I absolutely uh, didn't know what was going on. I didn't know, um, you know, this was a problem. Uh, at three months, this is a thing that can happen is a woman could hit a postpartum psychosis. And psychosis is another fancy term for um, mania. And um, I made a decision <laughs> uh, that a doctor has told me that I could go ahead and walk through some double doors and commit myself to a hospital. And I would say um, that was one of the decisions, you know, I was going through being a military spouse and my husband was deployed and didn't really have the great communication um, that I needed this and my newborn needed this. And that's something that takes humility. And if you ever have been trying to help someone commit to mental health care, whether it is counseling, simple as counseling, um, as simple as just, hey, like, you know, maybe you should read this book for mental health. It's hard to convince someone to get mental health. It is really hard. So for me to walk through some double doors, three months postpartum, in a manic episode saying, I'm gonna commit myself not knowing how long, um, I just kind of trusted my doctor. Um, so from there, I was treated. It was a private hospital, which thank goodness that was the case. And um, it hit me that I wasn't going to just be there f for three days. And unfortunately, I was so high that I was there for 17 days. And if you ever watched movies um, about mental health and people being impatient, it is true. 
that is um, very hard to, this is hard for me, it is very hard to hear the noises in the hospital. It is hard to hear the screams. It is hard to see the visitors. It is hard to see the families go away. And as you stay and get healthier, you're more balanced and you can see new people come in and you can understand that you're becoming more balanced, but the other people have no idea. So spent 17 days in a psych hospital um, as a three month postpartum woman. I was trying to attempt to breastfeed and I lost my breast milk there, which is pretty terrible. But um, at the same time, you know, having that ability to let go and give my baby formula, you know, and have help. Uh, someone who is recovering from being impatient, um, they need all the help possible. So if you have a friend, if you have a family member who is going through a mental health crisis and they are postpartum and they are dealing, you know, handling a newborn, uh, formula I think is a great option, but also, you know, if they can connect with their baby, that's great too. Um, one of the things that I want to like put out there is the signs. What are the signs of someone who is postpartum psychosis? Well, who, what do they look like, you know, if they're manic? And one of the things that was happening is my energy was out of this world. And I was up at all hours and had endless amount of energy. I spent $20,000 in two weeks. And I also um, didn't really have an attachment and I couldn't make sense. Uh, my words weren't really making sense. Sentences didn't make sense. And that's where I, you know, had all these signs, but the people around me didn't understand all of these signs of a psychosis. They didn't understand all the signs of what mania looked like, specifically how hard it can hit three months postpartum. So I am a huge advocate for uh, mental health for women, but it's not just postpartum depression. Postpartum psychosis is a huge thing. So when you're, you know, interacting with women who have had children, you know, recently, I think being sensitive and having a radar for how they are doing, how they are acting and behaving and how they need support is a really huge thing because, you know, to me, being separated from my child for 17 days and having my husband come home to an absolute wreck, you know, that is just huge. And my dog's right here. So my journey um, as a bipolar today to get healthier, to maintain a healthier lifestyle and not to go backwards, which I have a jarring memory of that hospital. I have a jarring memory of my face glued to a window for 17 days uh, without my baby. Um, to not go backwards and to move forwards every single day, I have made it a no crap, like non-negotiable to show up every single day for my mental health in so many different ways. So if you are supporting someone with a mental health, you know, struggle, my dog is going crazy. And if they are bipolar, I highly, highly recommend, you know, encouraging them to immediately get plugged in with their team. So it is a team that supports me, you know, and it's, it's not just a solo thing that has made me functioning and made me balanced and get out of debt. Um, number one, you know, you need to be constantly plucked into a community that supports you and that is probably made of your psychiatrist, your psychologist, and then the five people that surround you. So analyze, if you are bipolar watching this, you know, analyze the people that you surround yourself with. My, my dog's coming back and look at how they're impacting your environment. Um, analyze your health. Um, you know, sometimes you do have to push through really hard days and when you are um, a bipolar, you are asked to take medicine that, you know, truly can make you feel numb and work with your doctor how it's titrated. Um, because for a long, long time, I was in a very, very high heightened place and I needed it to come down. So that is something that a, a tip for you, if you are a family member or if you are a friend or if you are um, bipolar and you're listening to this, know that it takes time and patience to move forward and to be able to be patient and trust the process. 
trust the process that modern day medicine helps your chemical imbalance. And it's not a flaw. It's actually a gift to have something like this in your life to be able to conquer um, and embrace it that you have such a beautiful story. Um, my passion is to 100% breathe life into women with postpartum psychosis and to spread awareness about this because I don't ever want anyone to not know what to do for someone who is struggling with this. And I 100% believe that um, with the proper um, community, with the proper treatment, and the communication with your doctor, recovering from postpartum psychosis is possible. And another uh, another point that I want to make is that I um, rapidly gained 50 pounds, 50 pounds with my journey from 2018 to 2019. And that was a combination of two things. Um, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's when I was inpatient. My doctor was a genius and had me tested for my thyroid because three out of 10 bipolars, they do have thyroid issues. Um, and that's a fun fact. Seven out of 10 are ad addicts. Um, so they tested for antibodies. They found out I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's and then they slowed down my thyroid because it was hyper and went hypo for a while. And so the combination of the bipolar medicines and all the things they put me on, not just that, with the hypothyroid, it turned hypo, I gained 50 pounds in a year. And that is super hard for someone who's taking mental health meds to continue to use mental health meds because um, on one side of the coin, you want to be balanced, but on the other side, you see your physical body changing so much that it has a toll on your mental body. So I've used very simple routines um, that don't take, you know, more than 30 minutes or so, 35 minutes, um, five days a week, five or six days a week um, continuously. And over a course of a year, I've been able to lose almost all of that weight. And not only that, but have gained confidence. And so my encouragement for you, if you have a family friend, if you are um, bipolar or if you have a family member, it there is a way out. There is hope and God is so good. And I truly want to be able to share my story in this whole process of being impatient for 17 days and on the other side of it and looking at this and saying, you can do it too. So I hope that gives you a little insight on my journey, on my mental health journey, and knowing that even if you have been giving this title, you know, um, taking it and not I, putting your identity into your diagnosis is number one. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and take care. And I hope that you have um, a wonderful, productive day. All right.